hey, life's tough, we get it. And that's why we want to help. So that means over the next hour, this service, we absolutely believe that there's going to be something that you can take away that's going to help you this week. And guess what? It doesn't matter where you are in the faith spectrum. And get this, you don't even have to be a Christian to be able to get something out of this because we believe that Jesus can help you make life better. More importantly, he can make you better at life. And Jesus is the sort of guy that doesn't need you to have a whole heap of faith. He just says, follow him anyway. And guess what? This stuff's for free. Uh, stick with us. The service is about to start. Most of all, we're praying you're going to get something out of this this morning. Good morning, Northside, and welcome to church. Church is a bit different this morning as... We all know it's New Year's Eve. I hope everyone's had a great Christmas. Um, everyone is still vegetating from all the food that you've had over the holiday season. And maybe some of you are already getting your camp chairs out and you're already uh, ready for the New Year's festivities. Maybe you're already over with your family, you're over with your friend's house, uh, or maybe you're by the harbor or wherever you are in the world um, getting ready for New Year's today. So it's great to be with you uh, online today. Uh, we're going to be hearing later from Larry, uh, who's going to be sharing. And um, we're just so excited for all that has been this year, all that we've gone through. Um, and before we go anywhere else, we just want to uh, share very, very quickly uh, a story, a story from one of the members of our church uh, who has been doing a lot of work behind the scenes um, in one of our amazing recovery ministries in church. It's from uh, Esther. So why don't we um, turn to her now uh, as we watch the video? So I'm Esther Hart. Uh, I've been a member of Northside since 2013, gosh, so 10 years. And I've been leading the recovery ministries here at church, which has been a bit behind the scenes, but yeah, we're, we're doing stuff, yep. Um, gosh, God has led me on a journey. Uh, there, I went to Hillsong Conference a few years back and there was this video about the man with leprosy who approached Jesus after he'd done the Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus comes down off the Sermon on the Mount and this man approaches Jesus and says, Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And I thought about what's the modern day version of leprosy, right? What is a disease that is so stigmatizing that really um, marginalizes people, that people get discriminated against? And when people have an addiction and yeah, it's really obvious to other people physically that they have an addiction, then yeah, they get treated like they've got leprosy. And often in recovery, people talk about their clean time. That's their time that they've been abstinent from drug or alcohol use. And so when Jesus says, I'm willing, you know, to make this man with leprosy clean. I believe Jesus says the same thing for people with addictions. I think addiction, we all have an addiction, you know, some it's to drugs and alcohol, some it's to people pleasing, to control, you know, to, to food, to body image. So for me, um, I've had an eating disorder that I've been in recovery from for about 15 years. And over the last year or so, God brought me to a place where um, I started in my own 12-step recovery group, so similar to Alcoholics Anonymous for people with issues with alcohol. So I go to a food 12-step um, group. And so, yeah, God, you know, just um, prompted me with a couple of others to start an uh, in-person group. A lot of people were missing face-to-face -face groups. A lot of the these groups went online during COVID. And so we've been meeting here on Thursday nights at the Crow's Nest campus um, at Northside. And it's been amazing through that. Um, I remember, Sam, you said to me a few years back when I approached you about kind of recovery ministries, just to pray to God for two or three others that would get alongside me. And, and funnily enough, those two or three others didn't come from within the church. They came from kind of outside of the church. Um, but these two other, you know, people who really also wanted a face-to-face -face group started. Yeah, and so we, we started meeting here. And through this group in the last 12 months, it's actually really interesting. You know, we've had men come for help with their eating disorders. And I just think as a man, it would be so hard to get help for an eating disorder. I mean, it's hard, hard enough for women, but I think there's an extra level of shame and stigma associated with that for men. 
and um, I've been yeah sponsoring a couple of these men. Um, the the twelve step model works through sponsors, so you kind of have your own mentor who works with you through the twelve steps, and once you finish your twelve steps, you sponsor somebody else. So I've um, yeah had the have the privilege to sponsor a couple of these men through their own twelve steps and. Um, that just kind of pay it forward mentality. Yeah, what we've been given freely, we want to give to others. So I think with next year, what I'm looking forward to is just kind of seeing where God, you know, would have me serve. Um, One of the prayers that we say, you know, is about God help, yeah, like, you know, whatever your will is, for us to get out of our own way, <laughs> really, and yeah, to remove any blockages. Basically, the 12 steps is a systematic way of removing any blockages to God, to our higher power. And that way God can use us fully. Um, so God, remove any of my own fears, any of my own selfishness, my own self-centeredness, any of my own people pleasing. That would get in the way of me being useful to you, God. So I'm just really excited to see how God, yeah, is going to show up how many more lives God is going to touch um, through the me- through this message, really. All the 12-step groups are really based on biblical principles and the 12-step being kind of to spread the message to those who are still suffering from the disease, whether it be the d- disease of alcoholism, whether it be the disease of, you know, food addiction and eating disorder and body image stuff. And so I'm really looking forward to, yeah, God just touching more people's lives. People get connected to God through these programs um, people find their way back to God and that, that excites me. Yeah. Well, what a fantastic video that we just watched there from uh, one of our very own in Esther. And if you've been impacted by any of that, we'd love to have you get in touch with us. Um, but right now we're going to head uh, into the word with Larry. But just before we do, we just want to remind you that... Um, It's not like this every week for us just online. So uh, next Sunday, we're back in person here at Crow's Nest and also at our Toromoro location. Um, And if you want to connect with us, find out how you uh, can be a part of church, whether online or in person, um, you can click on the links below in the uh, YouTube feed, uh, and we'd love to connect with you. But right now, we're going to head over to Larry and hear the word. Well, as Jordan was saying, that here we are on New Year's Eve, moving into yet another year. Uh, My wife and I just couldn't believe uh, that this has come around so quickly. We were saying just recently, wow, Christmas has come so quickly and here we are pushing into a new year. We've been finishing off with our grandson who's moving into high school this year and we've been chasing around that. Cannot believe, uh, we remember when he first started school and... We've celebrated that, and now he's pushing off into the next stage of life. So heading off into 2024, and I think one of the things that has occurred to me is that as we step into the unknown, we take with us the well-known, and that is the person of God. I think many things as we move into this new year are unknown. Uh, I've always found that I've been a planner and a plotter, love to map things out. And often in reflection back on how the year has gone, it's not gone anything like I'd hoped, I'd even imagined or I'd prayed. Things were different, things interrupted, things came in and I had to change course on so many different directions. But a few things that I knew all along the way is that the Lord God was with me and helping me to navigate those changes. So I would say that as we move into 2024, I think the word unpredictable is some, a word that comes to me as we plan each year, as we move into things. We can lay the best plans out, but they don't always come to pass. But on certain things, we can rest. There's a story in the Bible I want to share with us today about the person of Joshua. And he was stepping into the great unknown, but he was stepping into the unknown with the well-known. He was stepping into the unknown with the person and the promises of God. 
Moses had been leading the people out of Egypt and Joshua was now taking over after Moses had passed. And this is the story. I want to read it for you. It's from Joshua. I'm going to be reading from chapter 1, verse, verses 1 through to 11. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place you set your foot. As I promised to Moses, your territory will extend from the desert in the south to Lebanon in the north, from the great river, the Euphrates, over in the east, all the Hittite country, and to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may succeed wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers to the people, go through the camp and tell the people, Get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan, here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. That's an astonishing story. He'd been under Moses. He'd been Moses' aid, his 2IC. Moses had been taking the people on a journey out of Egypt through uh, up the coastline into what is now known as Palestine. And they'd been on a journey for some 40 years. They'd been in captivity for 400 years and enslaved down in Egypt. And Moses was leading them out. Probably several hundred thousand people were on this great journey. Moses got right up to the very precipice of the land and that's where he, he died. For 40 years they'd been wandering around in the wilderness and as we look at the story, we understand one thing, that they were wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years because of fear-induced disobedience. Fear-induced disobedience. When we look at how far the distance was and how one might travel on foot, we can find out that it was perhaps, perhaps only about 18 months' journey in reality. If they were just to march on up, it would have taken them about 18 months. But they spent 40 years wandering around because when it came to the crunch, when it came to lay hold and seize what God had promised to them, they were filled with fear. They'd sent out uh, 12 spies. 10 of them said it couldn't be done. Two of them said it could be done. I believe that in life, we can often wander around in life's wilderness for a long, long time, even years, even decades, because of fear-induced disobedience. We fail to grab hold of what God has laid before us. And therefore, we just wander around. Now, imagine if you were in Joshua's shoes, leading hundreds of thousands of people from one country into another country, but it wasn't theirs yet. They had to go in. They had to conquer it. They had to go in. They had rivers to cross. They had battles to win. They had cities to take. They had wars to even wage, enemies to defeat. But God had made promises to Abraham, their ancestor. 
And these promises were to come true. God's people in God's place under God's rule. That's the kingdom of God. There they were, this rag tag rabble wandering through the wilderness. An appalling track record of disobedience. And yet God was still with them. They were going in on a great adventure with God. He was with them. He was not going to, to forsake them or forget them. So they were eventually divided up into 12 tribes. Ultimately, about 200 years later, uh, we read the story of King Saul and King David and King Solomon, where they took these tribes and consolidated them into a nation. And there they sat in this land, God's kingdom, if you will, God's people in God's place under God's proclamation and promises. A bit of a daunting task ahead of them. Friends, perhaps there's a daunting task ahead of you as you push into 2024. And I think as we look at this story and just pick out the eyes of some of the little truths that are in there, we can take enormous comfort and enormous courage in approaching this coming year, which will largely be unknown. But I would suggest to us that we move into the unknown with what is well known. And that is the person and the promises of God. Now, if you're not there yet, if you don't know the person and the promise of God, I really encourage you to contact someone in this church on this coming week. And we can help introduce you to the person and the promises of God for your life. So as we move into this year, first thing we have, of course, is the Lord. It's really important, I believe, that we need to know that God goes before us. God is already in 2024. As we move into 2024, it's, uh, it's new for us, but it's not new for God. God who is outside time, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of time. He already knows 2024. And as we seek to move into that space, we do so with him in our lives. We walk into 2024 with the Lord. So... Although it's unknown for us, it's certainly known to the Lord. And the Bible says that he'll deliver us. Verse 5 says, as we read it from our, our scripture here, uh, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And so we look for the Lord for him to deliver us. Certainly throughout this year, we've, as a family, really been looking to the Lord a lot to deliver us. We've been praying about some things in our family situation. And we've been seeking the Lord um, for his deliverance in certain things and his intervention in certain things. And sometimes it seems like, wow, where is God in all of this? But I want to t testify today that over and over and over and over again, even as of as we speak now, God is unfolding things and blessing people and delivering people in certain situations. You know, we need to know that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. That's one of the great promises in my life. That verse, which is quoted again in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I want you to know that now. I want you to know as you, as you head into 2024 that the Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. He's there to help you through all your, all your circumstances. He has a, a plan for us. And it's only as we lay our thoughts before the Lord and our lives before the Lord that we can find that plan. Here's what I tend to do. And, you know, it's a pretty common thing. Sometimes we like to plan things and then seek God's blessing. Friends, I want to say that's the opposite way that we should be approaching anything. We should be seeking the Lord first and then planning our lives and seeking his blessing. It's so important to bring the big issues and the small issues before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to pray through this. I want to live life your way. I want to know what God's plan is for my life. I believe that you can know that. If you don't know the plan of God for your life, if you don't know what God wants to have for you, I want 
encourage you to contact this church this week and someone can talk to you about the person and the promises of God and what a great blessing they can be. No greater discovery could you have in 2024 if you don't know already to get to know the person of Jesus Christ. This church lives to want to help you in that space. So please contact us if you're unsure of that particular thing. And so we move into 2024 with the Lord. We also move in knowing that we are to be certain things. We are to be strong and courageous. It says it three times in here. Uh, verse 6 says, be strong and courageous. Verse 7 says, be strong and very courageous. And verse 9 says, for I have, not, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Why would God command us again, again and again to be strong and courageous? I believe because it's so easy to be fearful. It says further down in the text in verse 9, do not be afraid. It's so easy to be afraid. I thought as I got older uh, that I wouldn't get afraid. But there are times when I am afraid. I'm still afraid. From time to time, I am afraid. This is a word for my life that I need to be strong and courageous because God is with me as I face things that I don't want to face, as I do things that I don't want to have to do. And I've been involved in a lot of that in 2023. I've lost some very dear, beautiful people, conducted some very hard funerals. I needed, I needed God's help very much. I needed to be strong and courageous, and I found it a great challenge. And we need to be guided by God's word. It says here that we are to uh, meditate on the word of God day and night. We're to have it on our lips and in our lives so that as we construct our lives around the word of God, that we'll have a life that's prosperous and blessed. And so I want to encourage us all as we move into the unknown, but with the well-known, which is the Lord, his person and his promises, that we build our lives around the word of God, that we, that we take into consideration for all our decisions the, the principles of Jesus, the pattern of Christ as his disciples. And I believe that that's one of the biggest challenges for us is that we need to, we need to both submit and sift, submit and sift our lives through the word of God. If we want to have a life that's going to, that's going to be the best it can possibly be, as Jesus said, life in all its fullness, life in all its fullness, John 10.10. 10. If we're going to live a life according to the fullness that Christ wants for us, it needs to be one based on the word of God. And so we have the Lord, of course. We are to be strong and courageous. We'll be guided by the word of God. And we're not to be certain things. We're not to be afraid. We're not to be terrified. We're not to be discouraged. Recently, I've been discouraged on a number of fronts. Certain things have arisen uh, in my professional work and other places that have, that have just really discouraged me. And so I've had, to really, I've had to really dig down and say, I don't want to be discouraged. I want to be encouraged. I want to be filled with the encouragement of God. I want to be facing 2024, not defeated, not discouraged, but encouraged, stepping into the things that God wants for my life. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged. Take the Lord with you. Don't be those things because the Lord is with us and he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. So as we conclude our thinking for today, I want to say to us, yes, 2024 is coming. Yes, we are stepping into the unknown. But we are stepping into the unknown with the well-known. If he's not well-known to you, he can be. You can come into a personal relationship with God through Jesus, and we would love to help you with that space. And so as we move in 2024, what does it look like? Well, we have the Lord with us. Let's not be afraid and discouraged, but let's be courageous and build our lives on the word of God. I want to pray a prayer for you. I want to pray a prayer that God would guide your, your year, that we would be able to lay our lives before him, that we would find the best possible path with God's help according to God's word. And so I'm going to pray a prayer that way. And if there's perhaps one thing, is there one thing that 
as we've journeyed through this little passage today, is there one thing that has stood out for you? Is there uh, something that has grabbed your attention that you think, I need to think about that a little bit more? I believe that that's God's personal word to you. So can I encourage you just to take hold of that? Not to let that go, even though you might be busy over the next couple of days. Just to tuck that away somewhere and think about it again and again. And let that, let that thought bomb get watered into your life. I'm just going to pray a prayer that God would, would, would bless us and this year that we've got. Our Heavenly Father, as we lay 2024 before you, greatly unknown. But Lord, as we're stepping there, we're not going to do so with fear. We're not going to be discouraged. We know that you're with us. But Heavenly Father, we want to live the best life, the Jesus life, the life in all its fullness. And in order to do that, Lord, we want to lay our lives, we want to sort them and sift them are based on the word of God. And so bless this year, Lord. May it be a year for each of us that's well lived. May it be a year that we've discovered more about God, that we've grown closer to him, that we've grown to love him more and that we've been enjoying more and more of the community of this, our churches. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we just lift up our lives. We ask you to bless them. May 2024 be one where we become more like Jesus and please him more and more. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thanks for listening to this message. And uh, remember next week, we're here in person and at both our campuses. So we'll be seeing you then. Thank you.